Hello, boys and girls. How are we today? I'm so excited to see you back to listen to our last folk tale. We've been talking a lot about fables and folk tales, and we know they have a lot of things similar, which means they have a lot of things the same. We know that they both use animals as their characters, and sometimes those animals act like people. We know that both stories can teach us a lesson or a moral. But our folk tales are a little bit longer stories. And these are stories that have been told for years from person to person to person. And finally, someone loved them so much that they wrote them down for all of us to enjoy. Our story today is called All Stories Are a Nancy. All Stories Are a Nancy. And every story has some words that we need to talk about. Maybe you know these words, maybe these are brand new words, but these are stories that pop up in our story, words that pop up in our story. Our first word is acknowledge. It means to make known or give credit. When you acknowledge something is that you see it or you're like, oh, wow, look at that. Approach means to come near. For example, we all get so excited as our birthday starts to approach. Quarrel means to fight. Like my brother and I used to quarrel over the TV remote to decide who got to pick. Satisfied means we're happy with it. And our last word, capture, means to catch something. So let's sit back and get ready to our story called All Stories Are a Nancy. Now make sure to listen very careful because when you get done, you will be writing a good sentence about what happened in our story and drawing us a picture. Long ago, there were no stories on earth. It was believed that all stories belonged to the sky god, Naomi who kept the stories in a box beneath his throne. Because there were no stories, people on earth just sat around their campfires. They must have been so bored. One day, looking down from his web, Anansi the spider could see that the people were restless and bored. Anansi decided he would bring them something that would make them happy and would help them pass the time. Anansi stretched his eight legs and wove a wonderful web that reached all the way to the sky. He climbed up the web until he arrived at the throne of the sky god, Naomi, the keeper of all stories. Naomi, he said, oh, wise one, great god of the sky, Will you let me have the great box where you keep the stories? I would like to take those stories to the people who live on earth. I will give you the box of stories, said Naomi in his booming voice, but the price is high. You must bring me three things. Osebo, the mighty leopard, whose teeth are sharp as spears. Mahabo, the hornet, whose stings burn like needle fire. And Onani, the great python, who can swallow a goat. Anansi thought about it, he pondered. I will pay the price, said Anansi. Anansi swung back down to earth on his web, and he went to speak with his wife, Aso. Together, they crafted a plan to catch her, capture Unani, the large python, first. The next morning, Anansi sneakily walked into the forest, waving a big branch and talking to himself. She's wrong, he said, pretending to be very upset. I know she's wrong. He's much.
much longer than this branch. As Anansi approached and walked up to the great watering hole, a large snake rose up. It was Unani, the great python who can swallow a goat. What are you muttering about, Anansi? asked Unani. You are disturbing my nap. I've been quarreling and fighting and arguing with my wife, said Anansi. She says you are shorter than this branch, but I say you are longer. She will not listen to me, and I do not see how I can prove that I'm right. That's easy, said the great python. Lay your branch on the ground, and I'll lie next to it. Then you shall see if I am longer. The great snake slithered away and lay next to Anansi's branch. It looks like you may be longer, said Anansi, still questioning. But I can't tell for sure because you're not quite straightened out. Could I straighten you out a bit? Certainly, said Unani. Let me fasten your tail just a little bit at the end, said Anansi as he worked. Then that way I can really straighten you out. And also here, a little lower. Oh, and here by your head. And before the python realized what Anansi was up to, Anansi had spun a web and used it to tie the great python to the branch. Now you are caught, said Anansi. And with that, Anansi carried the large python back to Naomi, the great god of the sky. That is one thing, Naomi in his loud, deep voice said, two things remain. Anansi went back to earth and began to strategize and plan to think how would he capture the mighty leopard whose teeth were as sharp as spears? But then Anansi thought of something. He dug a hole in the path that the great leopard used to get to the watering hole. He laid branches across the hole covering it. When Anansi was satisfied and happy with his hole, he was sure that the hole was well hidden. He scurried home and went to sleep. Then, that night, when the great python came out to hunt, he fell right into Anansi's trap. Anansi found him deep in the hole the next morning. Oh, great python, what are you doing in that hole? Oh, just look. Can't you see I've fallen into this trap? You must help me get out. I will see what I can do, said Anansi. Anansi found a large willow tree, bent the top of the tree over to the pit. He spun two silky cords and used them to fasten and to hold down the tree. Then he spun another silky cord and attached it to the top of the tree. This third cord dangled down into the pit. Here, said Anansi, tie the cord to your tail. Then I'll lift you up. Oh, the great... Python did, or not Python, the great panther did as he was told and tied the web to his tail. Anansi cut the cord that was holding the tree down. The tree sprang back to the original position, carrying the great, pan, great leopard with him. He dangled from the tree, tangled up in Anansi's web. Now you are caught, said Anansi. Anansi tightly tied the ends of the web and dragged the leopard back to Naomi. Now the sky god was impressed. That's two things. Only one remains. Anansi went back to earth to capture the hornet whose sting burned like a needle of fire. He thought and pondered and cut a gourd from a vine and hollowed out the inside. Then he filled this gourd with water and went to the nest where the hornet had made his home. 
a Nazi poured some of the water in the gourd over his own head. Then he dumped the rest of the water on the hornet's nest. Ooh, the hornet came out buzzing, angry. He saw Nancy standing nearby, holding a leaf over his head. Oh my, said Anansi. The rainy season seems to have come early this year. It looks like you have no shelter from the rain. Wait a minute, was it really raining? No. Why don't you take shelter in my gourd until the rain goes away, suggested Anansi. Well, thank you, Anansi, said the hornet as he flew into the gourd. You're welcome, said Anansi, as he closed up the opening in the gourd with his leaf and fastened the leaf with his finest, most intricate laced web yet. Now you are caught, said Anansi. Anansi proudly carried the hornet back to Naomi, the sky god. That is the last thing. You have succeeded. Anansi, where many have failed, you have paid the price. Then Naomi called out in a voice like thunder, Listen to me, Anansi has paid the price for the stories of the sky god, and I do hereby give the stories to him. From this day forward, all the stories belong to Naansi. Whenever someone tells one of these stories they must acknowledge him and thank him for all the hard work he went through to get these tales the end so boys and girls let's think first what could our lesson be from this story do we think that hard work and working really hard for others could be our lesson i agree and let's also stop and think, fact or fiction? Do we really think a spider went through all this work so we can have stories on earth? Probably not, but was this a really fun, exciting story to listen to? Absolutely. Boys and girls, I can't wait to see your sentence about your favorite part or something that happened in the story, and I can't wait to see your pictures. Have a great day.